Hi guys, it's Nicole and I'm back today with sketch number four from the 6x6 sketches from Scrapbook Generation. Uh, if you have noticed an absence, it was kind of intended. Um, I chose to take the first two weeks of our distance education to sort of figure out what that was going to mean for us and sort of how that was going to affect my days. And I so far have not really been able to necessarily scrapbook during the day and sometimes by the time we get done with the day and I've moved on to dinner and house and things like that I'm just kind of out of it so I kind of gave myself a pass for the first two weeks and then over the three-day weekend for Labor Day I just kind of came up here and tried to get as much done as I possibly could so I was able to get three layouts done and film a couple other things for different types of videos so basically whenever I have time and it's my turn to use the room and the computer is kind of how I am handling editing of things like that so luckily you guys are kind of already used to me not having a schedule so it shouldn't be anything new but I do just kind of wanted to touch bases and just let you guys know that yes I am aware that there is a big gap between this when this video goes up and when I think the last one I posted was towards the end of August so I honestly I'm just trying to find sort of some sort of routine so luckily I am sharing my room with my fourth grader and he does have certain areas of his day and his schedule where I can kind of be in here and be doing stuff you know next to him at, at my filming area and I'm not really bothering him like he can kind of tune things out like that especially the sound of my voice so which I'm not really talking to him when I'm up here but I have been just kind of fiddling around and doing smaller projects like um like one day I, I stamped a bunch of images and colored them for an upcoming video made a card for one of the teachers and just little things like that today I was working on some organizing so with all of that, I wanted to go ahead and start talking about the layout. So I shared with you guys in my like prep video for this these five sketches that I didn't match any 6x6 six six pads up to the sketch because I had a plan in mind of what I wanted to do. And I basically wanted to just go hunting for tone on tone patterns within any of the six by six pads that I have and find basically a rainbow of colors and patterns and mix them up and have them be combined to make up that big like hexagon um, background element. I normally gravitate towards these types of sketches in her previous 6x6 classes and sketch bundles because for me, paper is my favorite part of scrapbooking and my favorite sort of part of a collection. So I like when the sketch calls for cutting things down into smaller pieces because you get a better like overall like overall you can see more paper and more patterns and to me that's just something that I personally enjoy and the ones where it's just like one or two full six by six sheets of paper just those ones for whatever reason aren't really my favorite. So I just kind of punched obviously I didn't punch out enough at this point I just went through real quickly and punched out um, what I was drawn to originally and then I was Noticing that I was having some issues finding patterns that were tone on tone that I hadn't already sort of used up in a bunch of pads for whatever reason most of the pads I have didn't have like bright vibrant pinks or I had already used them. So what I ended up doing was I punched out a bunch of just white hexagons on some Nina cardstock and I took my distress oxide inks and just kind of did like an ombre type blend on them with a bunch of different colors. So I was going to kind of use these to fill in and break up some of the pattern paper and just kind of have them be something a little bit different. 
mixed into that big um, rainbow that I had. So like off the top of my head, I think I did picked raspberry, peacock feathers. This is wilted violet. Um, I know I did twisted citron, cracked pistachio, black soot, trying to think fossilized amber, I believe is this one. So I just kind of went with the colors basically that we're going to show behind or around my photos. You'll see here in a second that I did not punch out patterns for the ones that were going to be completely covered behind my photos. I ran into some issues, which I'll talk about that here in a second, but to kind of beef up these inked hexagons, basically I wanted to kind of just have it be like a homemade pattern paper. So I distressed them with just some water splatter and then some gold splatter and set them aside to dry. Now, when it came time to actually arrange the hexagons, it took me three tries to be able to figure out a method that worked for me. Um, these photos are sort of why I went with this rainbow hodgepodge thing that I have going on. Um, if you have ever taken a vacation to Las Vegas or have traveled around this area, this went up in 2016 and we stopped by in 2018, I think is when these photos were. But turns out, I did some Googling, turns out it's actually like an art installation. I, at the time, wasn't really 100% sure what it was other than it was these giant bright colored rocks stacked up and there's seven of them and they're out in the middle of the desert. They are the seven magic mountains. Some artists came up with them. Um, Google seven magic mountains, Las Vegas, if you want like the actual information on them. But basically this, we stopped here on the way to Disneyland. So from my house, this would have been 45 minutes to an hour away from my house, but it takes me 30 minutes to get through the valley of Las Vegas to even get to the freeway that takes you to California. And this is only like 10 or 15 minutes down that freeway. So if you were like a tourist in Las Vegas and you wanted to go see them, they're 10 or 15 minutes south of the strip in the tourist area. So it's, it's really not that far, but it was, you know, 45 minutes to an hour into our drive. So it was a good kind of just like, Hey, let's stop and go look at something and stretch our legs and then get in the car and kind of do the majority of our driving. So they, they thought it was cool. And some of the photos they actually took, I gave them my phone and told them to go take some selfies with, you know, their favorite pillars or their favorite color and, and that kind of thing. And it was just, again, it was just kind of like a nice, nice little pit stop. So here I went back to figuring out these hexagons. Now, originally I started by attempting to attach them straight to my background paper. That was attempt number one. <laughs> it, because I was leaving the middle open, I would do the hexagons all across the bottom and then I'd start going up the left and start going up the right. And then I would go across the top and they were not meeting up. And you would think that a shape that is got straight sides to it, that you wouldn't have that much angling issues and, and things not meeting up, but oh my God, I did. So here we are at third attempt. I'm just using some cheap cardstock that I don't care about because I'm gonna cut it down. And what I ended up doing was I would put the hexagon where it was gonna go, mark where the bottom of the hexagon fell on my paper, took my T-square ruler, and drew a line across the page, used my ATG and filled in that area with, with tape and then plopped, you know, every other hexagon that basically the bottom edge was going to line up with that pencil mark. And I just kept doing it over and over again. And then here is where I got smart and started filling in with some blank, just white cardstock hexagons because you're not going to see them. So I'm not going to waste the effort of pattern paper and arranging them in some cool order that nobody's ever going to see. So basically they were just a placeholder and also keeping them lined up. So from there, I flipped my paper over, cut off the ones that were hanging off the top and the bottom. And then I'm just going to cut the whole thing down and then attach this whole mat of hexagons onto the white cardstock that I'm going to use for my actual base. 
And then I did go through, and because I had done this three times of pulling them up off of the ATG, some of the edges were curling because I had just pulled them up so many times and put them on paper so many times. So I just went through with some liquid glue and just kind of popped up the ones that were pretty bad, like they just wouldn't lay flat and glued them down. I didn't go through and do all of them. At this point, I was very over this process <laughs> like and later after I did my layout I went and looked at Allison's sample because I had mentioned that I tried to wait and look at her sample later and then that way if looking at her sample creates inspiration for something else or I want to scrap lift it it becomes a separate a separate layout and I looked at hers and I was like oh my god I think she used a larger hexagon punch than the one that I have which would then be less hexagons to try to line up and match. So I was kind of like, okay, maybe that's why I was having such an issue. And then my sort of edge pieces here, I just took some black cardstock and I made the mistake of using the white Mr. Huey's Mist to kind of splatter the bottom and have it be like heavier on the bottom, lighter on the top. I keep forgetting that that's not a good idea. Personally, for me, if I need to do white splatter, I need to remember to just use white acrylic paint that's watered down because the Mr. Huey's smears even when it's been dry for four or five days. So the one I smeared was the one in the middle. The one on the far left and the far right, I got smart and used like a cardstock and just laid it across and then pressed it down and smoothed my fingers over the scrap piece instead of the actual piece with the uh, splatter. So I either need to just write a note on that bottle or throw the bottle away. I don't know if there's any reason for me to keep it if it smears and I don't want to go another step and go buy like a fixative or something or like a sealant to put over it when if I was just paying attention and had done white paint to begin with, I wouldn't have that issue. Um, over here on the right, I decided to go ahead and just punch more hexagons make my life harder. In the end, I absolutely love how it looks, so I'm kind of glad I did it. So I went back through basically all the different colors that I had used, punched another pattern, and then I'm going to make it look like another hexagon mat over here on the right. And in order to get straight cuts on such a small die cut, I just put a little bit of adhesive on the back, temporarily attached it to a cardstock strip, and then I was able to hold on to the cardstock and put it through my trimmer to get it. And I just used a pencil to kind of mark where I needed to make my cuts. And then I typed up my journaling and the first time I cut it, I cut it to the three by four area and then I remembered it needed to be smaller so that I could see all of that work that I just, you know, put into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down, put down that final black edge piece as well and again I was kind of strategic with like I didn't put hexagons in the middle I didn't even put one all the way on the edge over there because there was no point in me measuring and cutting that if I could just hide it behind this strip here so keep that in mind when you're doing stuff like with lining up a bunch of stuff if you can cut a corner do it and then I my first thought was I was going to stamp hearts in like a rainbow order and I couldn't find the stamp set that I was looking for. And then I found that I still had a bunch of those like make it yourself chipboard hearts from my family killer kit type series. So I pulled all of those and then I just had to cut the pattern paper layer. And I had plenty of scraps to do that. So I just again, I pulled the same seven colors to kind of mimic the seven mountains. And oh, fun fact, the small photo on the top and the large photo on the bottom right there, I 100% stole those from Google because Google has more amazing photos than the ones that I took while we were there. I didn't take any like wide angle ones when we were there because there were so many people. So that's a trick that I'll do like after a concert, I'll go Google images from that specific concert and see if I can find a photo that a press, somebody with a press pass that was up close to the stage took. And nine times out of 10, I can find one and they're just better photos. So thank you, Google. I was able to steal a couple of those to kind of add to the photos that I had just taken with my phone. And then I just went with the title of Colorful Pit Stop and I kept it 
neutral. I went with black letters, even though it is close to the black hexagons. And I kind of intentionally made my rainbow where the black was at the bottom because in my mind it just kind of feels heavy and I would rather that be at the bottom. And then because I had already used the gold splatter, I went ahead and grabbed some gold letter stickers to kind of tie into some of the gold that was going on. And then originally I thought, okay, I'm going to do like she did on her sketch and embellish like a bunch of these hexagons. I already decided I wasn't going to stitch on this layout because the one that I actually did previous to this, you guys will see after this. That sucker took me four days to stitch and my fingers still hurt, so I was not going to be stitching on this one. And by the time I spent two days trying to line up hexagons, I was like, nope, I don't want to sit here and embellish all these hexagons. So I just picked a couple label stickers, a little geo tag. I'm going to go to my um, enamel dot stash here in a minute or two and just kind of pick a couple colors and just sprinkle them a little bit here and there. And I can kind of tell when my brain is just done and it happened on this layout and it happened on the one with all the stitching which you guys will see probably later this week depending on my editing time I chose to kind of let all those colorful hexagons speak for themselves I spent a lot of time on them they take up a lot of space on the layout and they are very vibrant and very eye-catching so they already kind of act as an embellishment so if I had gone through and embellished all of those those hexagons, I kind of feel like it would have felt too chaotic. So in the end, I'm kind of glad that by the time I got to this point, I was over it. And I was in the land of throw some enamel dots on it and call it good. So I think that was pretty much everything that I did. I did make sure to date stamp it while I had the date already out. And then I added some phrase stickers, which are from a really old Simple Stories snap pack. So here you can see some close-ups around the layout and just kind of different things going on. Um, as always, I thank you guys for spending a little bit of time with me and chatting with me down in the comments. And I hope you excuse the sort of two, almost three week absence. And I will catch you guys in a video, hopefully later this week. Bye.